Hey guys, in today's video, I want to teach you all about routing in React. Um, first thing I'm going to show you guys is just basic routing. Then I'm going to show you guys how to switch between routes and therefore switch between components. Then I'm going to show you guys how to get the URL parameters and the query string. And then finally, to end things off, we're going to be creating our own custom route component to deal with private routes. And then I'll also show you guys how to take that one step further and, and deal with all sorts of other things specific to your needs. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is head over to the description of this video and I will have a link to a GitHub repository. So just be the basic boilerplate for this application. So to get things um, started, you want to run npm install and then the package we're going to be using is react router dom and you also want a query string. So I've already got them installed, so this will be quite quick for me. Um, but for you guys, this might take a little while. Uh, this is just a basic boilerplate I made using create react app. So you can also just use your own boilerplate if you want. So the first thing we're going to do is um, just import all the pack, all the components we're going to need. So this, these are all going to be from React Router DOM. First one we want is the browser router. Then we also want the route and the switch. And I'll explain all of them. So the browser router has to contain our entire application. So I'm just going to cover the entire application here. So sometimes you might see the browser router in the index. So you might see it here where we have the react dom dot render. You might see them wrap the app um, there, but I know that's not necessary because I know this is the highest level that we have. So this is just going to let us use all our routes inside our application and any, um, this also goes for any nested components as well. So we only need this once. Next up, I'm going to create our first route, but before I actually do that, just um, let's start up our development server. So if you want, if we type in npm run start, and this is just my um, integrated terminal, you can use whatever you want. So here we have React Router, which is just this h1 text. I'm going to get rid of that, and then um, we're going to use the route component. So route component lets us pass down a couple of props to it. So the first one that I want to pass down to it is the path. And so what the path actually is, is the part of the URL that isn't the domain. And I'll show you guys here. So for google.com, google.com itself is the domain. And then slash search is the path. And um, for example, uh, Google, so these two here, it's google.com and google.com with a forward slash are both the same. So what we can do is I'm just going to create the first route for the, um, just the index. So just slash forward slash. And then we can, so we're saying for this route where the path is equal to forward slash, I'm going to say render this component. And I'm just going to create a component here called index. And normally, of course, you'd have your components in other files, but this is just a very simple component. So I'm just going to put it here, just saying index page, and then pass it down here. So now if we look in our, um, in our development server, you can see that we have index page here. Now I want to show you guys a small issue. So if we were to head over to slash, let's say test, we still have index page here, even though we're not on just the index. That's because path here doesn't just check the, um, uh, doesn't check if the full path is identical to this. It just checks if the path includes this and specifically if the beginning of the path includes this or so everything up until here. So in our case, we can look here and we can see that at the beginning of the path, there is indeed a forward slash. So therefore, this is still true. And the way that we would fix this is by saying exact. So this will only run when, so this route here will only run and render this index component when the path is identical to exactly forward slash. So now you can see nothing's being run. And the reason why we're getting a blank screen is because this, this route here, the slash test, isn't something we're handling. So I want to create another another route here. So this is just going to be, I'm going to call this one dashboard. And I'm going to create a dashboard component. I can just copy and paste this one. So now, if we head over to, um, let's just put the forward slash, if we head over to slash dashboard, we should render this dashboard component. So that's 
good and it's working correctly now i just want to show you guys one more thing while we're on the basic routes um when you have multiple routes here one thing you might notice is if let's say we had two routes like this where they're both forward slash you can see here that we're rendering both of them and you might not want to do that so what is common convention is that we put this switch and this switch here will allow us to only choose between one of these routes and specifically the first one that matches so if we go back to our development server here you can see that we're only rendering the first one even though the second one the second one here also does match it the only reason we're rendering just the first one is because we're putting a switch and then the switch works by going from top to bottom and so it goes through it checks is this identical to um, the URL so we're checking the URL so think of it like there's an invisible forward slash here and it's saying yes this is true so this block exits and we just render this okay so that's just been routing and switch and being able to switch between routes so the next thing I want to show you guys is how to get the URL parameters and the query string let's start off with the URL parameters so I'm going to create a new route here with a path of pages and what I want to say is when I go to a route that looks like this so slash pages slash and then anything such as one two three um, I want to go to and the reason for anyone wondering why we're showing a dashboard here is because I have to change this back to dashboard and because previously the slash is true here and we didn't have the exact um, so yeah that's why we were just showing dashboard a moment ago but back to the point um, I want it to, to, to be able to write anything we want here so this can be an ID which is ideally what, what you might use this for for example 32 and I want that number here and I also want to have access to that so I can use that data for example to make an API request so the way we do this is by saying semicolon and then whatever you want here so I'm calling this ID you can call this page number so the name of this doesn't matter I'm just going to call it ID for simplicity and then let's create a component to deal with this so I'm just going to copy this and I call this pages so I want to show you guys the props that we actually get passed down from the route props yeah that's because I have to rename this to pages number and for now I just statically type in one so here we're on pages number one and if we look in the URL we have 32 and this is all of our props so we have uh, the history which lets us gives us some useful functions such as if we wanted to go back we could call props.history.go back um, and we can also let's say push so if we wanted to push to a new new page so props.history.push and then we could push them to let's say the dashboard and as you can see whenever we go to slash pages slash anything we instantly get pushed back to the dashboard and that's because we're doing that here but ideally what i want to show you guys is um the let me just go back to pages um if we look at the i think match yep yeah. so in match we have parameters and so you can see this id that we have here and once again i can change this to page number for example and then it would be called page number so whatever you call it here is the variable name that we're going to get in the object in the params object within match so let's say we want to do display this number here so what we could do um we could create a state for this so i'm just going to create a quick state actually that'll be unnecessary i'm just going to directly take it from props props dot uh, i think it was match dot params and then we know that we called it id and so as you can see here we have one two three identical to what we have in the url and then i can even add in the characters and we still get it here so that's how you'd get the props uh, that's how you'd get the um, url parameter from the um, props so next thing i want to show you guys is in the dashboard if I console log the props here 
I want to show you guys what we can do to get the query string. So if I create a query string, so I've already got one here, name John age 24. If I console log the props, you can see that we have um, the same the same three, uh, same three uh, properties. And the one that we're looking for is in location, I think. Yep. And the search. So the search gives us access to the query string. And then what we can do with this query string is just pass it. So we can import the query, the query string. I'm just gonna query, call it query string um, from query string. And I think it's the second one. So the one with the dash. And then using this, what we can do, and I just console log it, we can uh, access the pass uh, method. And then using this pass me method, we pass the string to it. So props dot location dot search. And then now you can see this is the object that we get back from passing this. So we just put, we just passed this exact string into this. And then from that, we got back an object where we have the age as 24, which is what we set and the name as John, which is also what we set. So that is how you'd get the query string and also how you'd pass the query string. So finally, I just want to show you guys how to create our own custom uh, route component. So let's just create this down here. So I'm going to call it private route. And then in private route, we're going to just destructure and rename some of the uh, props that we're going to pass down to it. So the first one, we're going to allow the user to pass down a component. And then we're going to capitalize it to component with a capital C. And then we're just going to accept the rest of the um, props as well. So this is just saying the rest of the props are going to be in this uh, rest variable here. So then somewhere in your Redux state, you would have something like uh, is authorized. So I'm just going to say is authenticated. And let's just set that to, let's set it to true for now. Then what we can do is if is authenticated. So if the user is authenticated, allow access. And actually, um, we, we wouldn't even do this here. We do this within the route. So what we do is we re return a route so that in this route component, what we do is we'd um, pass down the path, which would actually be equal to the path here, which we need to also get. So this would be the path that the user passes down. Then we would use render, which lets us pass the function into it. And then with this function, what we can do is return. And this is what we return is basically JSX. And we're going to return the component. Actually, I'll do this multi-line just to show you guys how it would look. And then I'll show you how to do it in one single line. So if the user is authenticated, then I want to return a redirect, which we have to also import. So redirect. And then we want to redirect them to, and let's just say in, in our case, the index page. But if they are, um, I'm sorry, this is if they're not authenticated. But if they are authenticated, then we want to return um, the actual component. So component. So this is referencing this. And we also get the props from render. And these are the props that we'd get here. And we want to pass down those props. So now what we're this is basically done for the um, private route. So if I was to create private route and I'll create a private component. So now if we say the path is equal to secret and the component is equal to private currently is authenticated is equal to true so if we would head over to slash secret we would indeed get onto your secret page and if you had set this to false you can see we've already been redirected out of the secret page so finally i just want to show you guys how to make this um look a bit cleaner
So the simple way we can do that is if uh, actually we don't even need to use it if, and we can all make this. We can make all of this single line. Don't need those. So um is authenticated, and then we can use ternary. So if they are authenticated, then we want to render the component and pass down all of those props. Otherwise, we want to redirect to slash. It's just the index page. So that's how you can make this a bit cleaner. And it still should work the same way. So uh, if I set this back to true, we should now be allowed access. Yeah. So you can use this to create any sort of middleware that you want. So you can think of it like middleware. So here, let's say you wanted to only allow this for um, admins. You can um, do a is admin and then check. And this data here, you'd ideally probably get it from your Redux state, or maybe you do make an API call and get the data there. Um, and I just remembered that uh, we want to also make sure we pass down the rest here to the routes. So this is just in case our user has any other um, any other uh, props that they want to pass down that they'd normally pass down to the routes. This way, we're not forgetting about any of them. Okay, guys. So that's been the entire video. I've shown you guys how to do basic routing. I've shown you guys how to switch between routes using the switch. Um, I've shown you guys how to get the URL query, um, URL parameters, and also get the URL query string and how to pass that. And then finally, I showed you guys how to create your own authenticated routes, which um, I've also shown you guys how to uh, change this for your own uses, such as making it only for admins, or you could also use this to make it only public or only for certain users. Anyway, guys, hope you hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.